All right. It's very busy. Let's see if we can find out where we are. We got some smooth muscle here and uh, somewhere on here. But now I won't find it, of course. Well, there's apocrine glands somewhere. Okay, I promise. Okay, maybe there's not. I don't know. I thought there were. Anyway, we're in the groin. I don't know. I don't know which uh, which gender the groin we're talking about, but the epidermis is acanthotic. It's expanded here, and it's very busy because it's got all of these large cells with vacuolated pale cytoplasm. So what is this? Well, that's your differential, right? We've got clearly, we've got big cells that are atypical, trickling up and spreading up into the epidermis. So it's, it's something with pagetoid growth. So the, the differential is Paget's disease, either Paget's the nipple or extra mammary Paget's, they look the same. Um, Bowen's or squamous cell carcinoma in situ, which is in fact the most common pagetoid thing I see just because squames are so common. And then also melanoma. The site is a big thing. If you were in the vulva or anywhere in the, the anogenital area, it's pagets until you prove to me with a good immunostain that it's not, okay? Um, and in other sun exposed sites, it's, I've seen pagets or paget like things like one or two times in like the extremity of an old sun damaged arm, really rare, okay? Uh, certainly not common. And, and uh, near the nipple, you've got to rule out internal malignancy in pagets. In the anogenital area, many of the times they're primary, ex primary extra mammary patches, meaning they're arising in the skin, but not involving the internal organs. The biggest thing that I think is important is if you have patches around one of the openings, if you're right around going all the way up to the anal opening or the urinary um, meatus or uh, the urethral meatus or the vagina, you've got to make sure that there's nothing internally. If it's on the scrotum but doesn't come anywhere near one of the orifices, then the chance that it's spread from an internal thing out, it's really unlikely, okay? Um, and, uh, but it is important to know. And these will usually stain with what? What kind of markers will stain Paget's disease? CK7. Yeah, I like CK7, it's my favorite. What else? CK20 will sometimes stain only usually near the anus, okay? And that's probably because uh, embryologically, the glands around the anus are derived from that same uh, endoderm, the posterior cloaca or something like that. It's the same area that gives rise to the rectum. And so just like rectal mucosa stains with CK20, sometimes extra mammary pageants can be CK20 positive, but not be actually from a rectal carcinoma. So don't make that mistake or say, oh, 20 is positive, it's gotta be spread from the inside. You probably, if there's any doubt, have them scoped. But, um, but CK7 is the best, CAM 5.2, a low molecular weight keratin, some of you like CEA, all those things, okay? And um, usually, I think you can, well, it's not a real good example of eyeliner sign. Usually there's a little layer of normal keratinocytes underneath, and the epidermis is getting filled up with patchetoid cells above. Sometimes you can see little mucin droplets in them, so you can do mucicarmin or mucin stain to see the mucin. Um, sometimes they actually form little glands, and occasionally they can invade out of the epidermis down into the dermis. And when there's a focal invasion, it seems like the behavior long term is probably the same. It's probably not like a high risk of getting mets or anything. I've seen, we've seen that a handful of times in those patients who are still alive and well 20 years later, still struggling with their disease. Local control is a big problem for um, patches. They either radiate or do a huge surgery. It's not an ideal thing to have in the anogenital area, but it doesn't usually kill you. 